Hello and welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we're talking PFSense and DNS. DNS is domain name system. This is what translate all the IP addresses into meaningful names for all of us on the internet and on our local networks. Well, this is an integral part of your network, of course. So let's see how that works in with PFSense. By default, PFSense is going to provide DNS services on your network, assuming that you're also using DHCP. It's going to use itself as its DNS lookup for any of your clients. One of the first things that I recommend you do if your PFSense is in fact internet facing is to override your ISP DNS servers. We don't really know for the most part what our ISP is using for DNS, how trusted their services are. And personally, I wanna use something that I know and trust that is secure for my DNS queries. I don't wanna just hand off to my ISP and let them just snoop all DNS queries. So in order to do that, go ahead and head into system and general. And for your DNS servers, what you're gonna to wanna to do is uncheck this box here so that the upstream ISP is not overriding your settings here. And go ahead and add in uh, a couple of DNS servers here. The ones that I recommend you use is provided by Cloudflare. And their two IPs are 1.1.1.1, easy to remember, and 1.0.0.1. So these are gonna be secure, anonymous, private DNS servers that are trusted. Yeah, you don't have to worry about your ISP selling any of your traffic data or your lookup data up to an advertiser or something like that. I don't know that your ISP is, but this is how you know that they can't because you're not using them for your lookups. So go ahead and save that. Okay, and you've just secured your home internet tremendously by doing that alone. You might wonder what the difference is between a DNS resolver and a DNS forwarder. By default, your DNS resolver is what we're using. Let's look at the forwarder just so we know what we're talking about. This is more of a legacy thing. This uses DNS mask as its backend service. It's more of a caching mechanism than anything. It doesn't do a whole lot of actual name resolution on the machine. It's really relying on forwarding to upstream servers. Now, some configurations may warrant that, but for the most part, you're gonna be using DNS resolver. Now, the DNS resolver is enabled by default. On the backend, it is using unbound. It's got all the features we're really gonna be looking for in a full DNS stack. There's a few settings we're gonna to wanna to look at just from a stability perspective. So one of the options here that is disabled by default, and I recommend you leave it disabled, this will make your DHCP clients automatically resolvable by making an entry in DNS. However, every time it does that, it also quickly restarts the DNS server in the background. That can be a little disruptive if you have DHCP clients coming and going, and there's not a lot of real good use to have name resolution for DHCP clients. So I recommend you turn that off unless you've got a really specific use case. IoT devices might be one as an example, but typically that'd be on a different VLAN and a different subnet. Static DHCP, now this I do recommend you do enable. If you use static DHCP entries, which we'll cover that in a little bit more depth later, you probably want those to be resolvable. Those are not coming and going. That's gonna be a one time when you add that entry. So that's, that's fine to go ahead and enable that. Open VPN clients. If you have VPN clients coming in, it's not too likely that you're gonna want them resolvable either. Those kind of fall in the same category as your DHCP clients. We'll leave that unchecked as well. A more advanced feature I'd like to show you, this can be really handy for a lot of different things, is uh, a wildcard DNS entry. I've got an example of that here. Uh, you can see how that's formatted. This goes in the custom options field. This here, this is going to let you take anything underneath this fully qualified namespace. So dmz.omgthecloud.com, anything underneath that, I'm telling it, please resolve that to this IP address. So if it were testserver.dmz.omgthecloud.com, if it were my computer, if it were this server.dmz omgthecloud.com, it would resolve to that 10.1.20.110 IP that I specified there. That could be really handy if you're using something that we will definitely cover in the container series, uh, which would be a dynamic ap application load balancer. You're going to need a whole namespace to resolve down to that load balancer, and this is a great way to do that without, without having to manage a bunch of DNS entries. Host overrides. This is going to be specific host entries. So if you have my server at 
www.omgthecloud.com and you know that it is on a specific static IP, you're probably gonna to wanna to just plug that in here. You can give it additional host names. So if you had my server one and my server two, they both resolve to this IP address. The DNS service is going to round robin through those so that you get a semi load balanced approach. And lastly, let's look at domain overrides. This is essentially a conditional forwarder. So if you have a, a domain that is not public, so it's not gonna just go out and get name resolution from the internet, but you need to forward a whole domain or a subdomain to a specific location for name resolution. Say you're forwarding to an Active Directory server or something like that, you would specify that here. So I could say, so for example, if I had another domain and again, it's not public, it's not on the internet, but I need to make sure that my systems that are behind this PFSense system are getting forwarded on to get proper name res, I would just specify that here. So maybe that IP were 10.1.10.190, something like that. That would be the next hop for DNS name resolution where it would go look for anything that falls under this domain namespace. So that's kind of how that works. We typically call that a conditional forwarder. So that's it guys, we're gonna make this one really short. This is just a quick overview of DNS inside of PFSense. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions and if there's any other topics like this that you'd like to see covered. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.